Why does Facebook need its own currency? Remember all that hype about Facebook's Libra? Back in 2019, Facebook made a big announcement with the intention of becoming the deployment engine of a universal currency. Backed by fiat money like US dollars and euros, of course such a big announcement brought much attention and immediately received strong opposition and pushback from governments around the world, claiming for regulation. The US government wasn't happy about Libra and actually dragged Zuck into the Congress to talk about it. It wasn't long until the team behind Libra's project lost major backers like MasterCard and Visa, among others, and eventually reformatted the plan. Making money in the crypto markets isn't always easy, but JetBot will give your trading account an edge. JetBot will allow you to copy trades from some of the best traders in the market and generate the exact same returns on your account. Don't walk into the crypto markets unprepared. Check out JetBot and start making profitable trades right away. A link to JetBot's website is in the description, so have a look after the video if you want to make money with your trading account. Hello and welcome to Cryptopedia. I am your gracious host, K7. If you love cryptocurrencies and finance, you are in the right place. Don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to keep up with all our great content. Today what was Libra now is Dime. The Dime Association in Switzerland, a nonprofit behind Dime's development, is working on a single stable coin pegged to the US dollar, which will be launched as a pilot in 2021. It is known that this pilot will be initially deployed in a small scale and focus on transactions among end users, you know, like when you buy a song or some other digital item online. The pilot will allow these users to exchange Dime for goods and services available on Facebook. However, there are no certain dates in this public launch. In a very real sense, Facebook is looking for a way not only to relaunch the ill-fated Libra project, but also create a new global digital currency at the same time. Most likely lessons learned, which is why you don't see much of a PR buzz about Dime, or the fact that it could beat China to being the first global private digital currency, no doubt. Dime's launch won't be as spectacular as Libra was, mainly to avoid the controversy which tanked the project. Nevertheless, considering the fact that Facebook has a wide reach of 2.8 billion monthly users, Dime again was treated with scrutiny and received intense analysis from bankers and politicians concerned on monetary stability, money laundering, and users' privacy. Among these, one of the biggest concerns is the fact that Dime, backed by Facebook, can become stronger than the US dollar. In 2019, right after Libra was launched, a former Bank of England governor proposed a digital currency to, re to reduce the strength of dollars as the world's reserve currency. In fact, Dime may have been the trigger that started the global race among central banks to figure out their own digital money strategy. China is leading the way, and Britain talked publicly about its intentions towards dropping the central bank digital currency, or CBDC, on global markets. Facebook isn't a stupid company. It has become possibly the most successful advertising company of the 21st century. And it got there by having an amazing knowledge of human psychology. It saw that digital currencies were going to catch on in a big way. And most people couldn't tell you the difference between a CBDC and Bitcoin. Unfortunately for Facebook, the banking cartel understands the power that money has. And as soon as Facebook started as Libra ad biz, the project was as good as over. Central banks don't like competition especially in an environment like the one we have today. After Libra's big announcement and breakup in 2019, the cryptocurrency market gathered big momentum with Bitcoin blasting up to 60k USD this year, and firms like Tesla and Square investing big into crypto. As we say, Facebook isn't a stupid company. It saw that things were changing and it wanted to get in the action. To show just how right Facebook was back in 2019, Coinbase just went public on Nasdaq. So it looks like things are changing for cryptos. Dime needed an extreme makeover after losing the support of major names like Visa, MasterCard, and Stripe, followed shortly after by PayPal, eBay, and Vodafone. The company also suffered the departure of Kevin Wheel and Dime's public affairs chief, Dante Disparti. The makeover included a name shift from Libra to Dime earlier this year and the appointment of Stuart Levy as CEO. Levy, a heavyweight financial player, was formerly HSBC Chief Legal Officer. Take a look at all the drug money HSBC runs for the cartels, and you will understand who this guy is. HSBC knows how to operate in the global financial arena, and they have been doing so since people called the company by its full name, the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. If you've never heard HSBC called that, don't feel bad. 
It was founded back in 1865. Dime's team is now in dialogue with Swiss financial regulators to secure a payment license in Switzerland as a key step towards the launch of the project. Besides, since users will have to undergo KYC checks, Dime's developers are adding different functionalities in use cases and applications to address regulators' concerns. You know, because the KYC system in this existing financial system keeps the dirty money out. Dime's plan is to start experimenting on small numbers of users as soon as they get the permission to launch. Eventually, as the project evolves, the idea is to bring in more merchants and partners to the chain. Being backed by Facebook, Dime is blessed from his birth by the enormous power of Facebook's user network. Also, despite those stormy Libra days, Dime Association managed to maintain the support of major companies such as Shopify, Spotify, and Uber. Another aspect of Dime being developed through the social media giant is that it will enable more people to engage in the crypto universe. But the known history of Facebook's commercialization of users' privacy data logically arises a big concern. The Dime Association will need to prove they take privacy very seriously if they want to succeed. But the real question we need to ask is, why does Facebook need its own cryptocurrency? So some people suspect that Facebook is really trying to make Dime the first private reserve currency worldwide. You know, because central banks weren't scary enough. Also, as it happens in most underdeveloped countries, Facebook is the main or only, in some cases, phone application to access the internet, becoming the global access point for the poor. A good example of this is Facebook's new app, Discover. The app gives a combination of free browsing data with the option of purchasing additional data provided by local mobile companies. Facebook chooses Peru as the first country in Latin America to test Discover, but plans to replicate later on in other countries like Thailand, the Philippines, and Iraq. Discover users can visit determined websites such as BBC News, Wikipedia, Bing, and of course, Facebook and Messenger without paying for the data used. The preceding phenomenon that gave birth to Discover was Facebook Application Free Basics. This novel initiative, available in over 60 countries, generated a wave of increasing criticism over the years from the government regulators to human rights and digital rights organizations from around the world. Free Basics unfairly harvested users' data for the social media giant, while in return providing low bandwidth internet for the poor. The phenomenon even came to be known as digital colonialism. Several national telecom ruling authorities allege that this practice favors some of the internet providers over others, violating the principles of net neutrality. End result, Facebook Free Basics was shut down in several countries. Facebook is not introducing people to open internet, where they can learn, create, and build things. Instead, it's building this little web that turns the user into a passive consumer of Western corporate content. That's digital colonialism. Sounds terrifying, the idea of allowing a single company to become monopolistic in such areas as access point to the internet, marketing and sales enabled network, holder of the global consumer database, and mentor of its users' money. So, do you still have a Facebook account? Didn't you hear about the hackers stealing information from 500 million accounts? Despite these scandals, billions of people still have active accounts on Facebook. Yet, those that try to improve their security level by clearing their data and requesting Facebook not to collect non-related Facebook activity dealt with frustration after knowing that whatever measures they took on the platform, Facebook will still know the websites they visited. Literally stalking. By turning on anti-tracking features and ad blockers in web browser, and activating add-ons like Facebook Container makes it a little bit safer but yet doesn't really stop Facebook from tracking users' visits to non-Facebook sites. Our preferred advice is to permanently delete your Facebook account and all the data it contains. And as far as Dime goes, avoid it. Thanks for watching Cryptopedia. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something from it, don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. This was your gracious host, K7.